Hi there and welcome to a new video. In this one I want to address something that has caught my attention a lot and it's basically this GD script style guide. You may know that Godot has some, uh, some ways of writing code that is suggested officially by them. But the thing is that most of the things that are explained over here are not applied in the, for example, getting started a guide over here. Uh, well, I can't seem to scroll over here. It, it is not explained here in the getting started section. In the documentation itself, sometimes these conventions are not being used. For example, over here, it is stated that we should surround functions and class definition with two blank lines and we always, I believe, tend to just use one line. And for example, we use a single line between classes and function definitions in the class reference and in short code snippets in this documentation. And that's all. They just tell us, okay, uh, in the JavaScript style guide, we teach you that this is how it should be written. And then in the, in the, in the documentation, we don't use it. Then there are other things that are uh, followed, let's say, in the documentation, such as here with the Boolean operators or of not using these operators and instead using the English version, basically this and not like this. Or, for example, this other thing, prepend a single underscore to virtual method functions the user must override, private functions and private variables. And I think... Um, that this is not followed in the documentation because we always see variables and functions basically declared like this and not uh, with the underscore. Because in reality, in Godot, every single function and variable is public. Basically, even if you uh, define this function, this recalculate path function as, let's say, private with the underscore, it is actually public, okay? Because you would still be able to call this function from a uh, other script so it is just something like uh, to keep the code clean and readable. But of course, here in the in the style guide, there are also things that are super useful. For example, how to name signals, uh, how to name constants, enums, etc. Um, so we need the, there are some things that are completely following the go to documentation and others that I don't think so. So that's why we sometimes tend to write unclean code a lot of people um, I will say something that I just realized like a couple of, of, of days ago, unfortunately. Uh, and also another thing that is quite interesting here is the code order that, that they give us. For example, firstly, it comes signals, then enums, then constants, then export variables, then about this uh, difference between public and private variables. In this case, it has to do with the order that they have, then already, and well, then the other stuff. Uh, so we'll actually see all this in a script because it is much easier to see this in just a script. So I have here a script that I have a written following all these conventions. Some of these are basically copy and pasted examples. So for example, here I have the class name. If you have any, it should be written on top of the extents. You will leave one empty space. I have seen, um, for example, if you create a brand new scene, okay, or actually I can create it over here, and you add a character body to the and you attach a script with a template of basic movement. Here they leave two empty spaces, okay, but I believe this is no sense uh, since there is no function. Here they, they are leaving two spaces because there is a function, okay. Um, and not only that, but if we go over here and here in some place there was an example an example script that I wanted to show you, I think it was like more on the top the right here. So for example, if I copy this code that as you can see here is a complete class example based on these guidelines. Okay, and I will just leave here like a lot of space. If we just erase these comments, as you can see, we do not have two lines of space between the extents and the first thing that we have. We only have one line of space. That's why here in this example, I am just leaving one space. But well, then in the template for the character body that is supposed to have like the best code practices because this is a template, uh, we have two. Uh, so maybe it's not that clear or you can leave either one space or two spaces. So feel free to leave as many spaces as you want there. Well, do not leave like 10 lines, <laughs> but if you just leave one or two lines, it's going to be okay. I don't really find the usage of leaving two lines here. I think it is just too much space. And once again, here it does make sense to leave two lines because we have a function definition and we have to surround functions with two lines of space. Um, so for example, 
Uh, firstly, uh, we have signals, okay? Uh, player spawns, and these, these are named with past tense. For example, you know, door opened. Um, I know, player animated, a coin collected, etc. Then enums come, and for example, if you have here like multiple signals, it would just be written like this, uh, one be, um, below the other, and when you change, like for example, now we are not writing signals, we are writing enums, there you leave the empty line. So here you have the enum, okay, in capital letters, because these are actually constants, and constants are declared with constant cases. Uh, by the way, in um, with a static typing, sometimes you don't have to say, okay, max life, this is an integer. You don't have to use a static typing there because as the value never changes, you won't really take advantage of all the advantages that static typing provides. Uh, but you can still add a static typing if for you it makes your code cleaner. I prefer not to do it, to be honest. Uh, then after constants, uh, they come the export uh, variables. Then we have these public variables. For example, these are variables that are meant to be accessed in other script. But remember, both private and public variables and also private and uh, public functions, they can be accessed in any script. So this is just something to write the code cleaner. Um, so for example, th this would be public variables. Maybe you do want to access the health outside of this script as well as the is game over, but maybe just the speed and lives you would only access them in the current script and there we have the difference in space over here and also in the fact that private variables have this underscore um then uh, we also have below uh, already variables uh, sorry below private variables already variables come so now let me compare here with the official code order order so you can see so for example well in this i don't have the at tool so i just have a class name over there um, then I have extends, I have signals, as you can see, enums, okay, then I have my constant, then my export variables over there, my public variables without the underscore, my private variables with the underscore, my already variables, and then they come the different functions. We have optional built-in virtual init method. So this is the first function that should appear if you actually need to. Remember to leave the two empty lines. Then we have enter tree, optional built-in virtual enter tree method. Um, then we have the virtual ready method if you have it. And then the remaining built-in virtual methods. So for example, I have it here and handle input, process delta and physics process. Once again, they always come with two blank lines in the middle. And then uh, they come public methods similar to variables. Uh, for example, I have transition to set is active, set state without the underscore. And then we have the private methods that do have the underscore, okay? So, well, of course, there are more things that could be uh, written over here, such as the tools, subclasses, but well, I think that this was the easiest way to explain this. Uh, so, well, yes, basically make sure that you actually follow as close as possible this GDescript style guide because. For me, at least personally, it has helped me a lot, right? A cleaner and a more efficient code. So, well, this is all for today's video. If it has been helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. See you in the next one and bye-bye.